פרשת חיי שרה. Even though that פרשת חיי שרה deals with the death of שרה, it's still called חיי שרה means the life of שרה. Life of שרה and not the death of שרה. And this is in a way maybe the biggest secret that this parasha is actually coming to teach us. And the parasha, the Torah, is telling us how could we live, how to live, and how to turn the force of death to the force of life. When we look at the life cycle, you really see the greatness of God, the greatness of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, as Baal Aturim says to us, at shelo kavta shimsha shel zu, alta shimsha shel zu. In other words, the HaKadosh Baruch Hu made sure there's going to be a replacement or substitute before Sarah died, already in place. Uh, as uh, Sarah died, of course we know, Right before that, Rivka was born, the daughter of Milka. And Akadosh Baruch Hu, in his great wisdom, always make sure that we have the medicine, the cure, before we have the, the ailment. Uh, this parasha, again, is so, as far as I'm concerned, so up to our days and what we do and what is happening to us today that it's really amazing. The Gemara in Masechet Kiddushin, Daf Ayn, uh, Daf Ayn Bet, uh, really strengthens this idea and gives us some fascinating examples re, uh, on that matter. The Gemara says, when Rabbi Akiva was born, I'm sorry, when Rabbi Akiva died, Rabbi, Rabbi was born. When Rabbi died, Rabbi Yehuda was born. When Rav was born, Rav, uh, when, I'm sorry, when Rav died, Rav was, uh, was born. When Rav died, Rav Ashi was, was born. The Gemara teaches us that a tzaddik is not a righteous person, that, that, that the whole world really stands on, the, the major pillar uh, is not going to leave the world until there's going to be somebody appropriate to substitute him based on the needs of the generation. Not necessarily great or as great, but what the generation needs. And that's, that's really amazing. As it says, V'zarach ha-shemesh uva ha-shemesh. And the sun, because it, it doesn't make sense. And the sun rose and the sun came. That's exactly what it is, which is a, basically a divine promise for the continuation, the spiritual continuation and the spiritual integrity of Am Yisrael. In this week's parasha, Abraham buys Ma'arat HaMachpelah. Ma'arat HaMachpelah, if you guys don't remember, is in Hebron. Hebron. Hebron was not a Palestinian uh, city because at the time there were no Palestinians. Hebron was also known as the capital of David King David. And Keep David was Jewish. Right? Don't let anybody tell you something else. And he buries Sarah over there, his wife. Abraham and Sarah were very, by, by themselves, very unique people. And just pay very close attention. They were very unique people just for the mere fact that they went against the whole entire world. Against even trends of the generation. Whatever everybody else does they do the opposite everybody is doing this they're not doing it they're doing something else not because there are oppositional defiance disorder god forbid or something of that sort absolutely not there's a great reason for that there's a great reason for that and they went so against everybody else just doing what everybody else is not doing until that they really had to run or flee from Ur Kazdim to Haran because of their ideas, the revolutionary ideas and the dreams that they had. Abraham and Sarah dreamt that one day there's going to be a day that every 
person, every human being, will have the right for human decency and this in human honor because every man, every human was created in the image of God. And that's a very uh, amazing, it's, it's a revolutionary idea to that time and even today. Even today. That's, if you look at this, it's, it's really, it's really advanced. And maybe only today you're going to start, I mean, this is talking about thousands of years after. Thousands of years after you would maybe start to see how we're working towards this thing to, uh, to allow people to, be, to, have, to have human dignity and human decency. Of course, in today's world, it's all good until it comes to Jews. But, uh, and from here we learned maybe one of the most important and significant lessons that a person can learn in his life and just pay very, very... Uh, you know, good attention. <clears throat> While we are humans, we have the ability to have a vision. Only when you have a vision, when it's your vision, only then you can progress. If you're busy doing what everybody else is doing, you're not going to progress. If you don't have a vision for your own, I'm going to tell you the following. I sent it to Yosef the other day. If you are not going to work on your dreams, to have dreams, to dare to have dreams, one day somebody would employ you to fulfill their dreams. And you got to remember that. It is to have a vision in your life is a must. You must have a vision in your life. Only then you could progress. Only can you could develop. And only then you could really fulfill our, our destiny of the deserve by the mere fact that we are created in the image of God. I mean, you would see, for example, in history, history books are full with stories about people that dare to dream that might seem at their time an impossible thing. And because of that, humanity was able to progress. When I think about this, about the concept of dream, of course, for me, the first thing that comes to my mind is the concept of Martin Luther King. The fact that he says, I have a dream. You guys don't know how on the dot he was. Of course, there are people today that don't want this dream to come true. They don't want equality. But nevertheless, it is right on the dot. I have a dream. And uh, here, uh, he's moving the thing. So you got to make sure that you have a dream of your own. And you have a vision, and you're pursuing that vision. What everybody else is doing, that's not what some, you should be doing. Everybody's doing that. That's not for you. You should be doing something else. You should be doing what's good for you. If everybody, certain people, everybody today learning a certain book, you, you should not be learning it. Learn something else. You're not going to grow from that. Stop with going after trends and after styles and whatever everybody else is doing. If you want to grow, if you want to actually live your own dream. If you don't live your dreams, if you don't have a dream, you're going to be fulfilling somebody else's dream. And that's, that's crazy. Come sit next to us, darling. It's okay. We all took a jars. We put the order in. Come here. Come here. However, most of us don't have a dream. And don't tell me you do, because most of you don't have a dream. And the reason why most of us don't have a dream is because we're afraid of failure. We're afraid to fail. But you should know, fear is good. Fear could be a great motivator, but you should be more afraid of living life without a dream than actually having a dream and failing. Because life with a dream or with a vision, life with meaning, with purpose, 
And even if this dream is not going to fulfill as we initially wanted, right? It's still good. Even if you failed in your dream, that failure of the dream is an opportunity to have another dream, to have another vision. But don't just give up. Don't give up. There's no such thing as giving up. Because we know what it says in Sefer Mishlei in Perek Chavdalet. Sheva Yipol Tzadik. They come and then he get up. Seven times you fail. A righteous person is not just a guy who uh, does this and this, gives it tzedakah. It's a person that continues understanding that there are tests and he passes them and he fails and, he, and he's still going to get up. Bekoach HaEmunah he gets up. Rashash Hirsch and Rashi also able to tell us the depth of the of the thoughts of Avraham Avinu during the time of the Akedah. According to Rashi, Avraham was thinking, he said, if my son would have been slaughtered, you know, he would have died without any children. Right? I should have married him to who? To Bnot Anar, Eshkol, Umamre. I would have taken somebody from here. But HaKadosh Baruch Hu, in His great mercy, already had the solution beforehand, and He told them about the birth of, of Rivka, which was His soulmate, the soulmate of Yitzchak Avinu. And it comes to Nisayon, the test. Now, you need to know something about tests. First of all, I'm going to tell you something about your enemies. The, your enemies are basically a mirror and a reflection of really who you are. And those enemies face us with challenges so we can overcome those challenges and by those challenges actually fix ourselves. You have to be moved. You have to understand that. Abraham had a double test. Not only the Akedah itself, but also the, the dealing with the fact of the death of Sarah, that according to the Midrash, she died just from hearing the fact that Avraham is going to slaughter Yitzchak. Just from that, she, 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 uh, she passed out. She couldn't take that fact, that the stress that Avraham is going to shech them, and then they says, no, he didn't, that tore her apart. And the Shama said, I can't take this. this overwhelming emotional stress basically killed her. And then, and then she died. The Zohar teaches us that when Adam and Chava ate from Etz Adat, they felt for the first time death. Now, again, you are not going to find what I'm telling you on your phones. And if you want to keep on going on your phones, that's fine. But you're not going to understand actually how to live your life. So I'm going to tell you this. Do you know what death is? Do you know what it is to die? You think that you really die only once, right? I'm going to teach you something today. Death is falling to a place of darkness. Death is falling to a place of darkness, of failure. Death is going down a step, from where you are going down a step. Every time that you are hurt, every time you fail, every time you give up, every time that you know any of these things happen to you, you die a little bit. You forming a little, another force of a feeling, a taste of death inside of you. Your mouth is dry, you're becoming weak. You are basically slowly, slowly leading yourself to die. You experiencing death. This is how you die. Death is this darkness that we have inside of us that we initially forget how to really tap into the DNA. That word's DNA, the word Shlishkoach, Shin Chaf Chet, 
penetrates into our DNA, we forget. And it falls into our RNA and it changes our chromosomes and it messes up our DNA and we get basically like spiritual cancer. That's exactly what happens. That's why Rav Nachman says, "En Yehush ba'olam." Don't give up. It's hard for you. It's hard for you. Probably, if things are hard for you, I'm going to tell you it's probably the best thing ever happened to you. Because if things are so easy for you, you better watch out because that's not good. Hard is good. Whatever is hard now, it's going to be easy tomorrow, and whatever is easy now, it's going to be hard tomorrow. So you better get hard now. It's good for you. That alteration of our spiritual DNA makes us old. And that's why you see young guys today that have no, no will to live. And you see old people, they're moving, they're doing stuff. It's terrible. Young guys today are spiritually old. Some of you are spiritually dead. You got it all wrong. You don't understand. And if you don't understand an internal this, you're going to keep on failing in your lives. And nothing good will come out of it. It's going to be one miserable life. And I'm telling you this. Listen to what I'm telling you now over and over and over again until it penetrates into your heads. Old age, zikna, being old, is not a deterioration of the body. That's very simple. Every, every person will tell you that the body multiplies. The cells rejuvenate themselves all the time. So that's not being old. Being old is falling into darkness that you can't come up and see the light. This is today what happens to a lot of young people. It says in the parasha that Abraham died zaken vesaveh. He was, he was full, right? He was old and full. In other words, he lived fulfilled life where the secrets of life, of his life, of life, of, of fe feeling full and fulfilled is on giving from yourself to others. Contributing and giving from yourself to others. Living life with a hope, living life with a dream, and even more so, living life with emuna, with belief. This is what could help us and save us from disappointment, from failure, and to give us a sensation of eternal life of every and every moment of our lives. If you feel that there's no hope for you, or you are going into, into a place that's like, I don't know, nothing works for me, or something, something and so on and so forth, you are experiencing a little bit of death. In other words, you're doing something wrong. So just stop. Come, I'll teach you what to do. Whoever understands this secret, by the way, can actually find true love. Unfortunately, most people today don't find true love. They get married, they get divorced, but they don't find true love. That's why this parasha taught, teaches us or tells us about the famous miracle that happened when Eliezer, the servant of Abraham, meets, uh, what's her name, Rivka, in the well over there in Haran, and she gives him water, and she gives his camels water also, and by doing so, he actually has his, uh, his, uh, his, uh, his prayers were answered. And, as, uh, and that is the, the, the siman, that's the sign that she's going to be the wife of Yitzchak. And that's going to be a zivug, a match that is actually going to work. As it says, and he loved her. In going back to the, as we started before, on the purchasing of Marat HaMachpelah in Hebron, 
This story comes to really reflect to us the great level of emuna that our forefathers have and their bitachon and the trust in HaKadosh Baruch Hu, in which they never gave up, they never lost hope from fulfillment of the promise, even though that most of their lives, whether it's Abraham, Yitzchak, and Yaakov, looked on the surface as a lack of fulfillment of this promise. They suffered. They didn't have a lot of children, and yet God had promised them, and they never abandoned that. Uh, you know, if you think about this, for example, take Abraham Avinu. It's a tremendous paradox, right? Abraham Avinu, that the whole entire land of Israel had promised, was promised for him, protected this land, with the war of the of the four kings, he had to pay an overpriced fee for uh, for Marat Machpela on a small, you know, uh, you know, grave. Yet he, he, he paid tremendous amount of money on it. He didn't really care, and yet nothing had blemished his emuna, his belief, as Rashi says in the beginning. And what the Torah had started, Birtsonon Netala Uveretsonon Atalalu. Akadosh Baruch Hu took it and gave it to us in his own free will. We didn't come and take the land. This land was given to us by God Himself because He wanted. The land of Israel, or as today some people call it Palestine, is basically a colonization of the land of Israel. Throughout the nations, nations wanted, throughout the years, the nations wanted to remove the name Israel from the land. They call it Judea, they call it Palestina, they call it whatever you want to call it. But we know what it is. Listen, we are facing tremendous challenges right now. Tremendous challenges right now. And people are very petrified of what's going to happen, are very upset and very fearful. But we have nothing to be afraid. I mean, we did read in Sukkot that one day all the nations in the world will come against Israel, right? We read it. And you see it in front of our eyes. How is this happening? And yet, it is also said that HaKadosh Baruch Hu will bring salvation to us and will gather all the people and Am Israel is going to be protected by God Himself. As hard as it is to accept this right now, yeah, it says, I believe it, and therefore I'm not afraid. I trust in Hashem. I trust in God. We should not give up. That's what everybody wants us to do, to give up hope. And we cannot give up hope. As Avraham Avinu continued to believe, even if he had to pay more than a full price for this small piece of grave on the land that was promised to him, also we need to believe that when things seem to us impossible, seem that you can't do it, We believe that it's possible that it will come. And after that, Avraham Avinu sees in Akadosh Baruch Hu, right? Whoever bring him until this place, he says, Are Zeniralanu, right? And another time regarding Avraham Avinu, regarding his emunah, is emunah in which he did not have before. The emunah, what we call emunah, is not just a passive uh, 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 acceptance of reality but rather an active force that allows us to continue beyond the limitations of the moment. It's a force. So when you try to do things without emunah, you won't be able to be successful. Emunah is a force that breaks away the reality, that breaks away the, the laws of nature. As you saw through all the stories of the Avot, if your emunah is lacking, 
you are not going to be able to push anything. You're not going to be able to execute anything. You're going to be stuck. You might create yourself a virtual reality in your wild imagination you think that you're doing. The truth of the matter is you are stuck in one place. As a matter of fact, and I told you, when you are stuck in one place, you're not staying in the same place. You're going backwards because the whole world is moving forward and you're still stuck there. You're going backwards. You must have a muna. Instead of reading all kind of books that you guys read or whatever things that you do, pick up a book and read something that would enhance your emuna. Without it, you are nothing. Without emuna, we are nothing. How can a person think about bringing kids to this world without having emuna that is going to be a better world? Now you wonder why there's so many people that don't bring kids to the world? It's because of that. People don't want to bring kids to the world because it's a bad world. And we said, no, it is a good world. And it's our job to make it better. Instead of going to the gym and lift weights, you need to come and learn about Emuna. Instead of reading some kind of a trendy book that everybody is doing, pick up a book about Emuna. Enhance your Emuna in Akadosh Baruch Hu. Emuna Pshuta. That there is God and there is a test and it's going to be all good. And these tests are my tests and I'm designed to pass them. Not to give up. Give up is for, is for, is for losers. We don't give up. We keep on not even fighting. Because if you fight all the time, you're going to lose one time. We keep on going. We don't care. We have to stop caring what everybody thinks about us because they don't care about us. It's just our weaknesses that is talking. Our fears, the forces that were put inside of us to immobilize us, to reach the goal and the destiny in which we should have become. All the anxiety that people have, all the fears that people develop, especially in this generation, it's because of lack of purpose in their lives. Because the emuna is missing. One of the ways for you, for example, to enhance your emuna, Rabotai, and one of the reasons I do believe that the emuna is lacking in many in many people's life is very simple. Because the truth of the matter is, you might be praying three times a day to God, but you never talk to God. You can talk to your friends on the phone for hours. You can text on your phone for hours. For hours! You can speak to your friends about every piece of nonsense in the world for hours and end, no end to it. You cannot take yourself to a place quiet, some kind of a place in nature, sit on a rock, on a vista, sit on a bench in a park and say to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Olam, hello, it's me, your servant, whatever your name is, coming to talk to you. You can't even say that. And you want to talk to me about Emunah? When was the last time you spoke to, to Hashem as I'm talking to you now? When well, was the last time you spoke to Hashem as you spoke to your friend? You'll see all of a sudden you have no words. So therefore all your words are nothing. They're meaningless. They're pointless. And that's why people got, get dumbed up. Siag lechokmash I challenge you. Speak to Hashem. Go on a corner. Go somewhere. Go to, come to the shul where nobody's there. It, but it's really better. Go to a place that nobody ever was before, or nobody ever prayed before, and just sit there and talk to God. Speak to Him. What do you want? Dare to say in your mouth. What do you want out of life? 
You don't even dare to do that. But to come to complain, how come God didn't do this? Where was God? With the, you know, that you know how to say. One of the worst things for you guys is those telephones. The telephones that you have is a trap for you. It's a trap that captures you and makes you absolutely useless. Useless. It doesn't give you hope. It helps you fall into false uh, illusions that you know it all, that you're smart, but for crying out loud, you can't even talk to God. Now you wonder why you can't talk to your wife or talk to your kids. Are your kids, when you, are, are your kids proud of you? When you walk in the streets, are your kids want to be with you? Are the kids proud of you? They're looking up to you? When your kids are afraid, they're coming to you. Or when your kids do something wrong or something bad, do your kids come to you? They don't. Do you know why? Because you don't talk to them. You talk to your phone. And that's terrible. And this is something that we need to understand. We have to have this. We need to understand, just like Abraham Abinu, that he saw a continuation in his effort, regardless of how difficult things were. That's the power of Emunah. Regardless of how difficult things were, he saw the great promise of a Kadosh Baruch Hu, whatever Kadosh Baruch Hu promised him, it will fulfill. So we, we could take this power and, and charge ourselves from the power of Emunah to believe that everything that happens is a part of a great divine plan. Greater than we'll be able to understand. Our job is not to understand. Our job is to believe. In our days, when we see those great challenges, let's try to remember Avraham Avinu, the image of Avraham Avinu, the Torahs, the true Emuna, is being measured and determined when things are hard and difficult in times of crisis. You want to see what Am Israel is? Look at Am Israel in time of crisis. That's the true Am Israel. Not the Am Israel that is busy TikToking or WhatsApping or Instagramming. That's not the true Am Israel. The true Am Israel is the Am Israel who goes in. They give their lives to one another, to help one another. When the roads seem closed, there's a block in the road. We need to remember that Kadosh Baruch Hu always, always has to follow Makah. So we got just hit. But we know that it's already, the medicine is already in place. Don't give up hope. And as much as Kadosh Baruch Hu was, was kept his promise for the continuation of Am Israel, regardless of what anybody would try to do to us, so is Kadosh Baruch Hu going to continue and take care of us in our days today. Don't give up hope. I think it's time for you to reset your priorities and the way you conduct yourself. And to that, we said the Mesidat Yesharim did a small diuk. It was medayek between Yefashpesh b'ma'asav and Yemashmesh b'ma'asav. Yefashpesh b'ma'asav is basically uh, sort through it to see what's good and what's bad. And whatever is bad, Throw away whatever is good. Keep. Yemashmesh is to actually feel. Take it and feel. Look at the good things that you did. And now make sure that they were done in the right intent, in the right attitude, in the right reason. Make sure it was done like this. Let's look at these things. You are not going to be able to do that if you're going to get distracted all the time. You're not. I know where we are very close, very close to redemption. Very close. Because I'm going to tell you why. Because today, to get distracted, you don't have to do much. You just have to take your phone. And that by itself is the devil. Is the Yetzirah. It's going to get you distracted from hearing what you need to hear, from doing what you need to do, and more so, 
take you away from the Koach of Emunah. So Rabotai, reset yourself. Reset your attitude. And limit the time you're on the phone to only very specific times in the day. Do not be on the phone 24-7, especially when you're in yeshiva. You come here to learn. Well, I'm about, there's no telephones. You came here to learn. When you're on the dinner table, no phones. I really hope that you'll set some time to speak to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Man to man, as you speak to a person, develop this intimacy with God. Enhance your emunah. Examine what you do. Take responsibility. And never, ever stop dreaming. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom.